Hi everybody, it's Christian from Student Education. We're going to be doing the four majors on the following coming week, which is the 7th to the 13th of December. It's going to be starting with the Euro against Euro Starline. Let's have a look at the weekly, the prior week to see what exactly what happened and what we could expect for the following week. So, non from payroll out of the way. First week of a new month, we expected non from payroll, and therefore we had a lot of data out this week. And if you look at the hard right edge, you can quite clearly see that we saw a lot of bearish sentiment creeping into price action. Uh, past, the prior two weeks before that, we saw a little hesitation under the, the weekly FIB here at the 23.6 level at the 2500. And subsequently, we, we should have been looking for a breach of that support level. And subsequently, we had a pullback the start of last week. However, as we headed into non farm payroll and after the non farm payroll figures came out, that um, pushed the euro lower than that weekly support level. That almost a, a full monthly uh, support level here on the weekly time frames. You could see that our indicator box was telling us uh, the overall sentiment is still very much in favor of further negative selling sentiment. Therefore, we should have been looking for further lows. You can see that the overall sentiment is still down, swing low, swing low, swing low, still pushing us to the downside. Therefore, we should still see a continuation in that actual play. So, as it stands at the moment now, I had a breach of that support and resistance level, as I mentioned to you, roughly around that area. You can see quite clearly, around the 12, 3400 and change mark, we saw clear support through that level, and we needed to see a, a break lower than that to give us a further confirmation entry signal for any further selling uh, on this particular pair. We know on the monthly we're heading towards a major support and resistance level, and that's that monthly FIB level here below us, roughly around the 121190 and change. This monthly FIB level here coincides quite nicely with that weekly FIB level, so this tells us or constitutes to a major support level below us. Okay, so that area around here, between these two levels over here, now clearly confirms that there's a major support below price. And if I just back out of this, you can quite clearly see that over the past number of years, we've had consolidation in and around this area. We had one back here in 2010, we had a further one here in 2012, and we're heading into this area right now as it stands, where price is trading to that level. So there's still some sentiment to the downside. However, the closer we get to this level of major support and resistance, you'll find that price is going to be more hesitant. Uh, we saw it over here, for example, a lot of selling, but as we head into the major low, which was a price support and resistance level low, we saw hesitation coming in, into price. And exactly the same thing over here is happening on price as it stands. Uh, everything is still telling us we should be looking for further negativity to the downside. You can see now, if I just pan in, you can see that we saw Friday's close, which engulfed all of Thursday's bull pullback, which was a week uh, Wednesday closed lower. So we've seen a lot of hesitation as we headed into the last couple of days of last week. And from Wednesday right through to Friday, that's where we saw the most data, the fundamental data that came out. So it was crazy to be trading around that time because there's a lot more speculation. I do continue to mention it a lot of my analysis. If you are trading the first week of a new month, you're doing so at your own peril, primarily because of the amount of data that comes out. And because there's so much data, there's more volatility, more liquidity in the market, but it's more, it's a lot more volatile. And if you don't get it right, you're likely to see more speculation uh, moving the market, and therefore you see a lot of uh, abrupt movements backwards and forwards between two points, and clearly this was the case. So on Wednesday we had a nice break lower, we had a nice arrow candle to enter. However, you'll notice that on that candle to the downside, everything was fantastic. But because we're trading non for payroll on the first week of a new month, there was a lot of data that preceded Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Therefore, so a lot of volume or volatility, and you can see price was all over the place. It's far better now to gauge the market once a week is confirmed closed and you can see that friday's close saw a further bearish engulfing candle now it's engulfed all of the past prior data at this level so that's telling me now we should be looking for further selling opportunities going into the um, second week of december so the new resistance level now if we are to see further selling we want to see a resistance and that resistance is going to be another price support which is the one two three five four one and change so as long as this week we see price staying below that uh, 12 35 41 change mark where then that's going to be resisting price and then we look for a target and the target for us is roughly around here at the 12 one one below which is our monthly fib level and that's an excess of roughly 179 pips away we're not going to get all of that but there's more than enough than 
on the table to actually take the the trade so we're looking in excess of 150 pips to the downside for the following week as a potential trading target moving on to sterling on the weekly you can see we've had a lot of hesitation over the past couple of weeks all that hesitation is taking place below weekly fib level here at the 38.2 level you'll notice that the overall sent uh, the movement on this particular bit is still to the downside we're still seeing swing lows you notice the last arrow was red on our weekly the candlesticks are red the institution moving up above price is resisting her we're trading below a weekly fib level we're trading below the institution which is the last prior weekly fib level as well the 50 percent it's not actually a fib level but it's a halfway between the zero and 100 but we're trading below the 38.2 level here in the near term and as long as we trade below that we should be still looking for negativity and clearly below me i have the 23.6 and the 76.4 level in my monthly now coinciding and you'll notice that my monthly fib levels of here are coinciding in an area where we've seen a major consolidation in the past so we're getting close to those levels so where price is trading right now to my next target there's an excess of 235 pips as i mentioned to you before i'm not going to get all of that but there's more than enough on the table for us to see a genuine uh, return on time invested okay and then your stops could be above the weekly fib level here as a as a true indication of where your risk is and where your target is so you can see there's roughly just above a one one to one target level notice on our indicator box here predominantly red and the r squared is complementing that neg negativity the rmo in our weekly time frame everything's in favor red arrow red candles the rmo is below the zero level and our awesome is below the zero level as well however clearly dark red so that's telling us there's further hesitation and if you look at what price has done it's trading if you look at the last prior week similar to what's happened on euro you'll notice that we have not seen price actually closing lower than the prior support level here and if i just pan in here you can quite clearly see there we go you'll see the bottoms of those wicks prices actually fell to close lower we actually traded lower but we failed to close lower okay so this level here at 155842 and change that's going to be my break point i need to see price actually closing lower on on that time frame on any consecutive days going forward if I drop down to the daily, you can quite clearly see that none of those daily candles actually closed lower than that level. So that becomes a major level of support. And I need to see price breaking that support level for me to see any further selling opportunities for sterling against the US dollar. I know where my target is, roughly around the 23.6 level at 1536.59. and 59. As I mentioned to you, there's approximately where price is trading right now to this level in excess of 200 pips. Okay, but I clearly need to see a new low, a new swing low. We have not seen any new swing lows over here. Major support. Got to see the support being broken before we can actually warrant an opportunity or taking a trade to the downside towards this level down here at 15369. So this week, that's coming up for the second week, I do need to see a bearish engulfing counter close lower. That in turn, I'd like to see all my indicators give me that sentiment as a genuine entry signal, and then I have a valid target level below me as I mentioned before. US dollar Swiss franc, if euro has been moving lower, that means the US dollar Swiss franc has been moving higher. And you can quite clearly see that here on the hard right edge, you can see that we had a consolidation point with the 76.4 and my 78.6 level uh, is a major support and resistance level in the past. And if I just pan out even further, you can see how it was prior support, therefore it is new resistance. Let me just make sure you guys can see that. So there, going all the way to 2007, in fact, to where she's trading right now. Oops, let me get this right, guys. Apologies. I'll get it right. There we go. So prior support from 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. Uh, end of 2010, we started to see that negativity really taking place and price forcing below that, that consolidation level and then breaking. And then you can see aggressively falling lower. Since then, however, we've seen price moving back to the upside. It's... This, this monthly FIB level here in blue has been a major hurdle for price. On one occasion when it actually broke high, it was actually trading into the underside of the institution moving average. Not a really good idea. And then the last opportunity we actually saw price trading just above the highs of that level, we failed to see a continuation counter kick on to the upside and that would have been our first target. Subsequently, price reverted back to the downside, which was another negative setup. And then we saw the outcome of that. Here on the hard right edge, however, if I just pan in so you guys can see it, you can quite clearly see now that price has been trading within this consolidated range between these two points. So therefore, a lot more risk was taken on board, a lot more speculation, a lot more volatility, and you can see price has not really done anything since it's been trading within this range. 
Last week, in fact, we actually saw the weekly candle on Friday close higher, which is a good sign. That's what we want to see. Remember, look if you look back here in March 2013, in fact, that was the last time we actually saw prices testing the higher of this range. You can see that we didn't actually have the, a physical close higher. We actually saw price trading higher on a number of weeks, but we failed to see price closing higher. Very, very important. This time around, we see the US dollar on the last week actually breaking this level of major support and resistance here at roughly the 0.97179 and change mark. So now the support will be that going forward on my daily, etc. Looking forward for further opportunities. I want to see this 97179 now being my support going forward. You can see that we had a lot of hesitation on Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday again. As a same scenario on our euro, it's just the total opposite. And that's why we have that positive correlation between these two pairs. Euro, if she's falling, and if we're seeing a lot of speculation or negative speculation on Euro, you're likely to see a lot of positive speculation on the US dollar Swiss franc. Because they are they both correlate really well with each other. Okay, so this case, support 97179 is going to be my new support going forward for the remainder of December. If price maintains above that level, then I'm looking to the upside. And I'm looking roughly around you at the 100% weekly fib level here at 0.9969 and change. And roughly where price is trading right now to that level, I'm looking in excess of just short of 200 pips. I'm not going to get all of it. If we can walk away with 160 or 170 clear pips of profit from this, fantastic. But that's going to be my target level for the remainder of this month, is that level above price. Okay. On the daily, however, you can quite clearly see we have not seen any new highs on the daily since Wednesday, in fact. Uh, so Thursday and Friday, we saw highs at 9796. We need to see a breach of that level to see any further entries. Stop below at 9713 and then target that 9969 above as our first target. Moving to the US dollar, Japanese yen is our last pair of the day. As we clearly see, we've seen a lot of US dollar strength and against a very weak yen. And you can see on the weekly, the US dollar has been rallying quite aggressively over the past couple of months, in fact after we had a breakout and you could see that we're trading above the 38.2 level on my monthly fib level here in blue at 11996 and change clearly my weekly level above here at the zero level it's a, the ultimate trend weekly low at 12407 is a potential long-term target for the remainder of this month in fact and that's 270 odd pips away from where price is trading right now and you can see that the indicator box is telling me that I should be looking for further or looking for only buying opportunities for the US dollar Japanese yen. So when I drop down to the daily now, I get a buy signal on this particular pair because it's telling me everything's looking fantastic. Notice the last uh, Thursday and Wednesday we saw price trading in a consolidated range. However, we do have a blue arrow. The candlesticks are still blue. RMO is clearly above. The Osama is the only one at the moment now that is clearly not giving us a true signal. And you can see it's just broken above and closed uh, green on the zero level. And we've had a punch up candle so now looking for any further opportunities guys you would like to ideally see a continuation from the close of friday moving forward so now if you look at the four hour time frame there we go you can take the high of that last four hour candle at one two one six nine and change as your entry signal on the one hour break out of that and then i can clearly target that one two four zero seven above you can see that the candlesticks are still blue the last arrow had was a blue arrow Candlesticks is blue as I mentioned to you. All my moving averages below price. RMO is above the zero level. MACD or the Osmo is above the zero level. So clearly on my four, I'm also getting a positive buying opportunity. So now all I should be looking for is buying breakouts. or breakouts of the, of the current high. So looking at the um, Sunday evening's opening to see if there's anything this week that's going to actually push price or the US dollar higher. And therefore we have a positive target level above us here at the 12477 change mark. That's the four majors analysis for this week, upcoming week. Please, if you are using this template, please back it up with sound money management rules, guys. Very, very important. If you are interested in this particular template or any other templates going forward from Student Education, please drop us an email. The email address posted at the end of this particular video and get hold of us and we can go over a number of things with you going forward. Other than that, hope to see any of our students who are training this particular template on the forum. And if you have any questions, you know where to get hold of me. Until then, hope you guys have a fantastic second week of December. Keep it simple, guys. And most importantly, trade serenely.